The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Hi, T. Hi. I'm going to get you to stay here for this one. Oh, okay. Because I've seen you and you were in good nick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Just stay that, right now. It's coming from a gay male. She's in good nick. Yeah, okay. like I'm going to sit down here. shelf. You better. She's looking good, right? <laughs> to the point where I think, like, there's certain people that look so good, Sean, you go, God, what's the point of, what's the point of clothes? What's the point of wearing clothes? That's right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like for me, this is this is this is a this is a this is an, a, a clothed body. Yeah, yeah. He's a ne- Nathan's a never nude. We've spoken about that. I'm a never nude. He's a never nude. But you, I, I can imagine. Do you just go home and just like rip your gear off? Sometimes I walk around. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the artist, the US artist, who's in Australia again doing that thing. You know the one that gets massive amounts of people. They all yep. get naked. He was in Brisbane this yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Got them all going on a bridge. Could you ever do that? Oh, I think that's just drawing the line for me. I don't think I could. I don't oh, have. You nah. just you can't meet somebody for the first time and their penis. You're you know what I mean? It's a bit you, much, literally, isn't it? you literally just can't, Sean. It's a lot. Uh, for me, that for me, that's a lot. How many people were involved in this photo? We've seen the picture. Well, a lot of people can. You Sean, can see this online. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. Of and they had two lots. They had one lot lying on a bridge. They had another lot along like a like a jetty thing. It's it was just a lot of bits out, isn't it? Just a lot of bits. And, and, and I, I just think, like, who are they? And I was looking really closely at mm-hmm. the picture, and I thought, there's no one like T there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I, didn't come like across, I, didn't, I didn't come across. Close. I didn't come across a T yeah. no. in there. Came I across. Slot myself in there. Who, who, who was the likely <laughs> candidates with, with, uh, that you spotted? I mean, it just looks like. Road, imagine the... when your parents had their friends over back in the day. It looked like their friends have all taken their gear off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And these are people that are in comfortable marriages, so they don't go to the gym. They don't care. I think it's the old. It's definitely the oldies who feel more comfortable. Well, I, straight away, I don't think that we live in a. In a next generation nude era. No. I don't think... Uh, for you, for me, when I think nudist, mm. I think older. I think 50 plus. Yeah, uh, probably, I just don't no, 50 plus, Even 60 plus, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty comfortable. Yeah, so when, when yeah. I first started um, uh, playing footy, uh, uh, one guy who came over from another club, mm. uh, he decided that he was go- he was a nudist every time we stayed together. So we we first stayed together in a hotel in Melbourne and the moment we walked in the door, he took all his clothes off. And <laughs> I so thought, is this, is this a hazing of sorts that's going to take place here? It's just a lot, isn't it? <laughs> but then when you're in a big group of uh, in the showers and stuff, that's what the go was. But over the years, Nate, since I've left the Frio, yeah. they're doing it differently. They all wear their cock jocks or speedos or whatever the case is. Yeah, they're too woke to show, dude. Um, <laughs> but the other week when I was at the golf club and I played a game of golf, as soon as the game's finished, right, you Are go you into the club room. talking about in the locker room? Yeah, as soon as you oh go no. in the locker room, oh. everyone just um, derobes in a heartbeat. Oh, my God, they're all no bending over, picking up yeah. their stuff. You're seeing 18 holes. They're dropping <laughs> <laughs> the 19th. <laughs> the 19th hole's terrifying. <laughs> oh, got, we've got a theory. Right, we've we'll got a theory that mm. only on um, older people get nude a lot. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. We'd like to talk about this. We want to know if you love getting your gear off and we'd like to know your approximate age as well because I don't think that we have the next generation, Sean, of people that are showing their mini ha We're dying out. I think it's a dying breed. I totally agree yeah. that. It's, it's all private now. It's private, yeah. mi- private minis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Derek's in Averly. Good morning to you, Derek. Hey, how it goes? How are you? Hi, Derek. Well, so Derek, you sound twenty-two, but <laughs> let us know. Let us know your real age. I just turned sixty-one, actually. Okay. Hey, Happy Derek. Birthday, well done, mate. Derek. All right. So, what what does a sixty-one-year-old man do in the clothing situation? Try to be as naked as possible really? at the time, as, as long as as long as there's not really buddy any viewing it. <laughs> oh, okay. As okay. long as there's not people viewing it. <laughs> okay. So, have you ever gone to? Okay. So, you you when you're at home, your gear off. Yep. Like, yep. And for, most of my even, it, I have a towel on the couch, <laughs> just in case someone knocks on the door. <laughs> What's that? That's my ass towel. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Sit down. Would you like one? <laughs> do you do you put some clothes on when you're cooking? Um. Uh, yeah. I've got a. I've got a liar. Apron, though. <laughs> <laughs> liar. <laughs> but, just, you're, you're one of the people that pretend to wash their hands in the bathroom when they you know they don't. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> but I I was part of the in Mardi Gras 2010. Yeah. I was part of the 500 uh, 5,000 odd people that got naked in front of the Mardi uh, the the Opera House. Oh, oh so you did Derek. this exact thing for for um Spencer yeah. Tunic. 
Yeah, yeah, Tunic in, in, in Mardi Gras 2010. Okay, so what's it the was, deal? Well, what's it like when every, you're just with a bunch of strangers and no one's got clothes on? What's it like? Yeah, it's, it's a horrifying experience. <laughs> when you, think. you get there You get there for like nearly two or three hours before. Yeah, um, yeah to warm got, up. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you're doing like roll, rolling it in your hand like plastic scene. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. but, and everybody's closed. So they really goes. They've got you know, they had shows on and drag queens coming around cheering you up and all that sort of stuff. And then they they said you know, just as the sun was coming up, they said everybody stripped. <laughs> and it's like, and everybody stripped. Because I must admit, it was like it was quite freeing. Within about half an hour, everybody was quite. Fine, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It does look empowering when they drop the roses, like you're in like a like you're in a tampon ad. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm the woman, sort of thing. Um, how many yeah. people there would you say is it a good thing that they had their clothes off? How many there were like top shelf percentage wise? Oh, there was wise? a lot of top shelf. There I was, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was quite a lot of top shelf. Um, I was definitely, you know, lower shelf. It's yeah. <laughs> good honesty, Derek. I'm not sure if you start, after a while, you stop sizing everyone up. Because you're just, you're too, oh, sub- yeah, con- Sean, you're too conscious Sean, about what you're doing. But something will walk past you and go, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. That is insane. Do you have the picture? Do you have the picture at your house? I do. I have the, because um, everybody gets the picture. Yeah. And I can sort of pick out where I am to a certain degree, but you can't really tell because it's one of the smaller ones. And then I've got the... What do you um, mean, one of the small ones? <laughs> <laughs> they put them in category, Sean. Ah, <laughs> uh, Derry. Oh, sounds like a good time. Derry. Well, you've done it firsthand, there what we're go. talking about. All right. That's hilarious. Thanks, Derry. Carly is in Thornley. Hey, Carly. Hello. Carly, Hi, Carly. we just spoke to Derek, 61 years young, loves getting his gear off. What about you? But he doesn't do it in public doesn't normally. Public. He did it for, that, for oh, the photo. That's, Jesus, that's public though. Yeah, no, I'm not in public. Yeah. So I've had two kids. I'm 27, but I've yeah. had two oh. girls. Yeah. And it's just, it's not what it used to be, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't care anymore, is that what you're saying, Carly? It's like, I don't care if people see them yeah, close so off. Yeah, like after you, you have know. two kids, you're just like, ah. Oh. Stuff it. Oh, well. And then, like, so, well, oh, I was just like, I've got no time for buttons. I have children. Yeah. I can't put on pants. You know what I mean? I can't put on pants. And no, you're well no. feeling. Yeah. Do you, oh, are, you are you, no, I'm fighting against you, that daily. Are you like, um, uh, are you like, uh, what's his name? Derek. Derek, and uh, you go home and just take your gear off? Yeah. Sweetheart. Have you ever, what happens when there's a knock on the door? Has there ever been an emergency? Yeah, like, well, a, like, a, like a clothing emergency and you're nude? Oh, you've got to like, you've got to be very, you know where your exit is. <laughs> <laughs> Dive behind the couch, no? That's a safe spot. Yeah. No, I was in my house once and yep. the post lady came to the door yeah. and she, <laughs> she seen me. <laughs> I, I'd never run so quick in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm hiding your UPS from her. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... <clears throat> Now we, I know her personally now, so now I always say, you could have bought me a drink first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Have you got a partner, Carly? Yes, is he, husband. Yeah, a husband. Is he nude as well, or is are you just no, nude around him? No, he always complains that I'm... Always news. Ah, oh, sure. <laughs> Isn't that terrible what marriage does? Yeah. You're now with this yeah. person that you yeah. loved yeah. and you yeah. courted and now your complaint is they are naked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate. Oh. I hope you still hold hands. Maybe if not, <laughs> yeah. 51 years in the future, I can tell you what Marlene Bryan said is going to happen. That is hilarious. It's the Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. Sean, a new law has passed. A yeah. lot of people say that we live in a nanny state. But this is brilliant. Yeah, I don't think this shouldn't be linked to it at all. Not that's at to do all. with the P platers only being able to drive around with one passenger. Tom's Law, which they're calling it after Tom amazing. Safiotti lost his life. This is this has rung true really strongly over the last year for me. With um, I've got two P platers in the household, but yep. we also lost a young footballer by the name of uh, Nick Campo mm. earlier this year, and you would have yep. seen that over the news yep. on and on again. And if these laws were in place, then both uh, Tom and Nick would still be here because there wouldn't be a, you know, four or five people in the car at any one time. Now, I do understand for kids it's a tough time because, you know, they're looking at your social media restricting you on that and now you're telling you how many people you can have in your car for the first six months of your pee plates. But having uh, listened to people that have had their licence who have been your age in a car, 
it's bloody worth it. Because I know how distracted I was. I, I, looking back to the way I was driving, I was driving like an idiot. Because that is the first time you get into a car. I believe that you shouldn't be able to get into certain powered cars as well, like a, like V8s and stuff. You oh, 100%. 100%. I don't you agree with that at all. But not on the first year or couple of years of, of your license. It's, it's ridiculous. You wouldn't hand someone that just, you know, to learn how to shoot a gun, a machine gun. No, you know no, what I mean? It's insane. No, Nathan, I totally agree with you. So it's really interesting in WA. So if you're going for your P's, you've got to do 50 hours. It's got to be recorded. In Melbourne, it's 100. Like, it's not... Yeah. And I think on New South Wales, one of the others is almost 150, so three times more experience than what we have to do in WA. And when you say about recor- recording the amount of hours you do, a lot of people fudge the books and all that oh, kind yeah, of stuff. 100%. So it's not accurate at all. It's like they're people job ke- job keepers' diaries. <laughs> yeah, so they might, Nathan, just go and be able to pass that test on that one given day. And I've been in the yeah. car with... Uh, well, I can say a couple of my kids sometimes when they've just got their license, I, I'm still all over there driving because yep. they just don't have the competency at that time. So I still believe it needs to be more hours. Bring it back to just one passenger car. It just makes sense for everyone out there that, you know, with experience now, Nath. Because course. you know what? You're not getting behind a wheel. You're getting behind a possible weapon. Yeah. You know, and it's about what can happen to you and it's about what happened to, to, to the people as well. But also, just the guilt. If you, in your first six months of driving, to be honest, any time holding a license, but for you to be in a scenario where you have survived and you have lost friends that while you were driving, the guilt that would put on would be insane. So that first six months just gives you a little bit of time to be able to settle into what driving is. I would love them to do what you said before and they're hopefully looking at that and that is to uh, make sure that the cars that they're driving around, um, you know, are up to a certain spec yep. so you're not driving those high-powered uh, cars. And I think that I don't understand it's why it's schooling. It's one of the most important things we do in our lives and at the age of 17, you're able to get your licence, in which case most kids are still at school, right? So 95% of kids are probably still at school. Why aren't we doing stuff there? Oh, well, in schools like in America where you do actually driving lessons at school. I don't understand why I'm not doing that. It doesn't make any sense. We're doing home action and we're learning how to make porridge But we're not using a lot scratch. of all these skills that we're learning and education parts of education that we're learning at school and they put a lot of work into it. We leave them behind when we leave the yep. schoolyard, right? Yep. But this, as a skill itself, is something that stays with us for all our lives. And imagine the amount of lives it can save by just going about that as an extra You're curricular right, Sean, activity. Because at school, I learned the school of make, I learned the skill on how to make board shorts. I didn't really. Mum just sewed them. Um, and then I brought them in and acted like I did it. But, like, do I need to know board shorts or do I know how to drive a car properly? Yeah, for sure. I buy my board shorts. There's your answer. The Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. Sean. Yes, Nath. I have never, ever owned a car that has a tow ball. Are you serious? There are tow ball people and there are yep. non tow ball people. I think tow ball um, males that have a tow ball, they're, they're like real men. They're men that have a trailer that they put things in, like wood and a concrete machine or something. <laughs> and then, like, or like just heaps <laughs> of sand. Machines. Heaps of sand. Um, I've never been a person that needed heaps of sand. Yeah. And I've just never had a tow ball. Uh, I've got to say, it's a good moment when you first learn, st- start to tow things behind, whether it's picking up a trailer, which I used to do for my dad, or whatever the case is. When we had a boat many years ago, um, just being able to. Uh, Haul that around and also reverse it, which is an unbelievable skill because sure. you go on the opposite the way. Jack you know, knifing, you don't want a jackknife. That's all I hear. I've heard about the warnings of tow balls, yeah. and I've been like, I'm, I'm, I don't have the skills. I know I don't have the skills to go down that road. And also, another person didn't have the skills either. A man aged in his sixties, driving a black Toyota Land Cruiser east on Kent Street in Victon, Sean, your neck of the woods. Yeah, he came into trouble when he turned left onto Point Walter Road about 11:30 p.m. on Saturday. He was towing a boy. What's that mean? A mooring it's boy. a mooring boy. So when you go past the river at any stage, you'll see those mooring boys, which is a boat tied yep. onto that allows it to stay in the one position and floats. Yep. Okay, so um, the boy um, swung out, as you would mm. when you go past the a corner. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, it swung out and it hit a white Toyota Land Cruiser parked outside a home. Uh, and then it basically just dragged and was just causing carnage. Um, then it flipped the actual car that was towing it upside down. It was a lot because it got caught. Yeah, 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 it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. So going up the hill, that's a really expensive um, part of uh, Bicton. So you're going up the hill, right, or, or away from the river, and there's beautiful houses. So he just sweeps to the left-hand side. And again, Nath, on that on that part of Point Walter Road, there is many land cruisers because they're very expensive yeah. on the front of those lawns and beautiful think, houses. I did think we were going to be popping into like Range Rover territory around that area. Where's the Range Rover kick in around, you know, all, no, the, all those, no, the think, G-Wagons? Where, where, where are they? Oh, I would say that they're, they're probably Del Keith area, but mm. most people 
are still getting around in the Land Cruisers. They're, they're like hundred and twenty thousand dollars or something. Isn't and it? then some. <laughs> How embarrassing! What would you have done if no one was there? Would you have gotten in and driven off? I would have. <laughs> well, <he's laughs> I mean, I know that's illegal, but it's just too much. Oh, you just like, just lock it. <laughs> just walk beep, away. Beep, and just walk away. Because <laughs> it was like uh, it was just before midnight, so it was like um, half past oh. eleven or something. So what do you do? Yeah, I mean, apart yeah. from the fact that he was in trouble yeah. and everybody came to help him out, the the ambulance came. Yeah. But if that's not the case, right? Do you have to go and then knock on someone's door? I don't know. You've, from. I mean, the residents there, they're all confused as well. This is a guy that we saw in the news this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, he looks like he's wearing the clothes of um, someone from Duck Dynasty. It could have been worse. Well, my mate's car was parked behind there. Okay. If it wasn't a Land Cruiser, it would have been bugging. So it could have been worse. And that's the thing. When someone does something horrendous, you always say to them it could have been worse. It makes them feel better. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We want to know. Towing. People that have tow balls and have used the tow balls, what can go wrong when towing something? With the tow ball. Yeah, did your trailer just fall off completely? Yeah, did you leave your boat behind? Brendan's in Apple Cross. G'day, Brendan. Good morning, guys. Hey, Brendan. So, Brendan, in my mind, men, and this is so sexist, but men, um, uh, I'm not one of them, were born <laughs> with the abilities to tow things. Is that true? Well, some men can tow things. So, this is a story about my mate. It's not yeah. my story. Of course okay. it is, yeah. <laughs> so, he got all excited and decided to buy himself a jet ski. Oh, wow, well, um, would you? It was a... It was a second-hand jet ski. Yep. So he picked it up on a Friday afternoon, and on his maiden voyage, the jet ski started to sink. <laughs> so he, he somehow gets it back to shore yes. and thinks, righty I've got to get this jet ski out of the water. So he puts it on the trailer, and this is where the mistake started to happen. <laughs> yeah. So he, because it was a brand-new jet ski that, for him, yeah. the shackle that you tie the jet ski on yeah. wasn't on the trailer. So he had no shackle. So he thought, it doesn't matter, I've, I've got the strap, so I'll just keep the strap on it. Yep, I'll strap um, it down. He, yeah, stra- he just did the, the hook that he winds it onto the trailer. Oh, yeah, 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 yep, yep. Yep, and then he decided that oh, I'm only going a short distance, so I won't need to strap the back of the jet ski down either. <laughs> so, and obviously he's quite frustrated with his situation because he's bought this new ski and it doesn't work. Yeah, of course. Probably. Okay, so then he's, he's in Apple Cross, he pulls out, oh, pulls the ski out of the water, heads down to turn onto Kintail Road yeah. and takes the corner too sharply. Well, the jet ski wheel clips oh, the curb, no. bounces yeah. up, yeah. the trailer trailer comes off the tow ball, so no. now the trailer's been dragged by the chain only. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But not only that, the ski bounces off the trailer and he's now skidding down the road 20 metres behind him and he's pulling it along <laughs> by the strap. Oh, OK. All the so, fibreglass is just getting smashed. He uh, said the sound was horrendous. Oh. Um, so when he finally got out and walked down there, a lady behind him decided instead of overtaking him and just going past, she would stop so so nobody could get past. So as time went on, there's 20, 30 cars piled up oh, behind him no. as he's blocking the road and everybody's just shaking their head. Well, I mean, seriously, some people are going, oh, that's not how you use a jet ski, and, 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 No, that's not. They don't go on the road they like that, They don't go no. on the road. They, they are the motorbike <laughs> they, of the they, sea, they, not they, the motorbike they, of the road. They, Sean, I've heard they're designed for the water. <laughs> so that's how, did he, how did he get it lifted up? Did he have to get someone with a high ab or something to be able to pick it off the, de- uh, off the road? He was lucky. Some uh, a big forward drive came past with that were towing two jet skis behind him, and four blokes jumped out. Oh. They had a chuckle, oh. and they said, "No worries, fellas, we'll, we'll pick it up and we'll put it back on your trailer for you." Because oh. the only thing left to do would be to hopefully not want too many people around. Um, if, if get a screwdriver under the license plate. Do they have license plates? <laughs> yeah. Do they have no, license plates? No, they have num- they have stickers. That stickers. With their numbers. Peel the sticker off and yeah. just walk off. Yeah. And just walk off, Sean. And it's, sometimes it's best to leave it. <laughs> oh, Thanks, buddy. Good, Brendan. Hey, Paula's in Dunkirk. Hey, Paula. Hello. Paula, are you a lady that toes? Um, I yes, I do. Mm. Um, but this story is like the other man. Yes. Who is a friend of ours? Yeah. Okay. Who has the accident? Um, and yeah, they had an ex and a lie cast, but um, then they upgraded, and they were then getting some petrol down south yeah. and yep. forgot they had a different caravan and went under a, <sighs> like, the roof. No. Or, you know, went, went, drew, did the drive through and forgot yeah. that they didn't have the same height caravan. Oh, so they, smashed the whole the top off. And those people, it doesn't matter what they've gone through, what situation put them there, the fact that they've got a new caravan, anyone that's driving past just goes, what dickheads. Oh. And that is the worst, <laughs> isn't it? That is the worst. I thought, yeah. Definitely, oh. when, we ever, when we drive past and we look at where it was, like, 
When you just have something like that, do mm. you cover by insurance? Yeah. Oh, well, if you got the caravan, for, for like, got, for like yeah. dickhead things. Yeah, there's no things about. I mean, because you can. D- <laughs> Yeah, I know you're laughing at me, Nath, because no, you've seen no. me doing this all the time. <laughs> but there's no law about being a dickhead. A dickhead. Okay, great. Mm. I was just sort of worried because I thought the show would get shut down. Uh, Simone's in Lanzo. Hey, Simone. Hi. All right, who's towing, Simone? I was. Oh, great. All right, I want to see if a lady can tow. Do it. Uh, a lady can tow, but not very well. That's okay, that's okay. <laughs> what happened to you, you Simone? Last year we were in the middle of the Wanneroo fires and my husband was racing back from work to try and get some of our cars out of the property and I decided that I wasn't going to wait for him. <laughs> so I loaded the race car onto the <gasps> trailer. What yeah. race car? What sort of race car is it? An off-road race car. Yep. Yes. Um, the next door neighbour, who's actually an off-road racer, helped me load it and um, Hubby said to me, no matter what, just make sure it's in park before you leave. And I went, yeah, cool, cool. The next door neighbour loaded it. He's a driver. He would have put it in park. Yeah, of course he would have. And off I went and three streets later I biked to go around the roundabout and the race car came through the back of my car. Oh! Oh, <gasps> oh no way. So what? Ha- like, how far in the back of your car? Like, What happened? Uh, it ripped all the undercarriage out of the race car, so that was a costly damage for how, that one. But how much, um, my how much? car was okay. How it was much? about two and a half thousand dollars. Mm. Um, did you oh, think of how Simone. you could lie about this to your partner to seem like you'd done nothing wrong? Did you have that thought? I blamed the next door neighbour well, completely. Got, yeah, well, yeah. that's true because he was the one who loaded up there. Of course, he would have put it in park. Yeah. The handbrake on. Yep. And then also, you just, uh, at the end of that, while, while saying what happened, there was the Navy, then you got to cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fires were literally approaching as we sat on the side of the road trying to get oh. the car back on the trailer. So I yeah, kind right. of had a good reason to not get in trouble. Hey, how are you on the flip side of those fires? Everything cool? They got to across the road from us. <sighs> Mate, I'm so lucky that we don't live in the fire areas. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, yeah, it's unbelievable stuff. Glad that you're safe, Simone, but that car, not too good. Let's go to Martin in ha- Mount Helena. Hey, Martin. How are you? Good, buddy. Good, Martin, man. was it you towing or is it someone else? Uh, I've done a lot of towing, but uh, I have a much funnier story about somebody I saw love doing it. something really dumb. I love yeah. it. Was it Sean? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? No, it wasn't Sean. Yeah. Um, I was at the boat ramp in Cairns. I just pulled my boat out of the water and was tying it up and uh, it was very busy. And there's this guy with a brand new Land Cruiser and a beautiful big boat. And uh, because it was busy, I could see he decided to uh, do the quick launch trick, which, you know, if you know what you're doing, it's great. You basically unfasten your boat, you unhook it at the front there, you back down the ramp, tap the brakes, the boat slides off into the water. Oh, okay, Somebody right. with a rope okay. holding it on. Yeah, oh, so yeah, it's like when a bartender's on the other side of the bar and they just fling you a drink, drink. Yeah. yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Works, works really well if you know what you're doing, but this day it was low tide in Cairns, it was a fairly sizable tide, and the bottom of the ramp was slippery. So this guy backed down the ramp, tapped his brakes, and the car didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> it, it kept on going Sliding. straight into the water. The boat floated off. The person who was holding the rope for the boat was so shocked they let the rope go, so the boat floated away as well. <laughs> and we watched this uh, land cruiser slowly settle into the water and disappear. <gasps> oh, oh, no way, no. man. It went right in. Yep, it went right in, all the way in and floated away. Um, oh. Oh. I actually swam out and hooked a rope onto its tow bar and um, and uh, dragged the rope ashore and we tied it off so that it wouldn't go far. And then uh, some tow truck people came along that and <laughs> they hooked it up and uh, pulled it all out. I don't, people re- so I don't think people realise because of the name, it's a land cruiser. It's, a, yes. it's supposed to go on land. When a car goes in the ocean like that, we've seen it so many times, yeah. right? When they pull yeah. it out, can you, what's salvage, the deal? Can, can you salvage, salvage that uh, car? No, no, it's right off. It's all no, water. It's it's salt it. That's water. the end of it. <gasps> Yeah. Wow. Big so, time Lance, we were just talking about how expensive they are, mate. They are not bloody cheap. Oh. <laughs> no. Wow. That's huge. Thanks, buddy. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.